Alright guys, I'm back. <clears throat> It'll be the second video. Again, a nurse safety video. And, uh, let's see if I can get this scooted over a little bit so you can see it. This goes back to something I talked about before. Um, about isolation transformers and radios that you hook them up to. And this is going to be something about why you should use, especially when you got like an All-American 5 or any type of radio that doesn't have a transformer in it, why you should use an isolation transformer, even with, especially, not only for your own safety, but when you're working with uh, test equipment with it. Uh, you might hook a signal generator to it, you might have a scope hooked up to it, or whatever. Uh, we'll go into that, why that's important, that you use an isolation transformer. The other thing is how those equipment being hooked up can also cause you little problems that you need to be aware of. So first let's look at how we get our power and drive it out and show how basically your house is wired up and everything. Out in your pole somewhere or it may be on the, on the ground if you have underground wiring in your neighborhood some places is above ground some below but either way there's going to be a transformer that transformer is taking a fairly high voltage which uh, depends on the area but can be in the vicinity of around 1200 volts or higher it can be 2500 or 2400 or something 2500 or depending on the city depending on where you're at in the loop the whole nine yards but anyway it's a large voltage and it brings it down to the voltages you can see in your house now you can have two voltages in your house now this is US okay right off the bat guys uh, it, this will be US so I'm going to be talking about 120 and 240 you can have 120 in your house and 240 most of your outlets in a US house that you plug your TV into, your toaster into, you know, your oscilloscope into, uh, hair dryer, whatever, is drive to 120. If you've got, say, electric water heater, electric dryer, electric stove, a decent welder, a high amperage welder, out in your garage or whatever, a lot of those will be 240. Now, the way they drive that is, is on the secondary clear across the whole winding of the secondary is 240 volts and then we were center tapped and we call that neutral or common also known in electricians words as grounded connection or connector or lead but in any case 120 between here or 120 between here Put the two together to get 240. That's how you get your different voltages. Uh, they call it grounded because it is actually first the electric company keeps it grounded. They also keep one of these lines grounded too. Um, if you actually follow the lines on the poles and look, you'll see at least every other pole. And if they're fairly new, if they've just got done putting in new poles, or fairly recently, you'll see on every pole but there'll be a ground that goes down that pole. On one side of that line, they'll go to the transformer, the primary. But there will be a ground coming off that transformer and going down. That's first number one protection. Used to, they not, you, they used to in the old days didn't do that on, on these. They left it up inside the, the house, but Anyway, this will feed to your house, go through the meter, so that you can pay the electric bill. They know how much you use. And out of the meter, it comes in, and, you know, red and black is your two standard colors for your hot leads. And then, I didn't have, well, white wouldn't work. It's a whiteboard, so I use blue. Blue, we'll call neutral, or ground, did, connector. And then green for your third prong, your green wire, that's your grounding connector, ING, because it's the one that does grounding. 
it's the only one that's actually truly grounded to earth. It goes to an 8 foot ground rod and in some places it can be a 10 foot ground rod and in some places it may also not only have a ground rod but also go to your water line and have a jumper across the meter so that because a lot of water lines were metal out and out going out from your house going to the mains which were metal at one time and they thought that made also a very excellent ground and double protection in any case inside your breaker box you got your main you'll have several little breakers you may have some double breakers for 220 which will connect both these two hots together and to to the, your through the breakers to your lines they'll go to whatever appliance that needs 220 in any case out of one of these are going to one of the plugs that you plug stuff into the very long lead side on the on your plug is the neutral side the short one is the hot side and the little d-shaped little thing where the third prong is the ground so the ground connects up to one spot in the in the box and that hooks to the ground wire that is connected to it that goes to your eight foot ground rod that's in your yard someplace by your house they also make a jumper across either through the box or directly across to the neutral to make sure it stays grounded and stays neutral so these two actually should have the same potential no volts between them. If you ever measure them and they do have a little voltage between them, there's a problem. The only voltage you should see is you measure from hot to neutral, hot to ground. Okay. Now, let's get to our radio. We got a radio here. Uh, it is a radio because I said it's a radio. So anyway, we got a radio here. We'll call it. Let's say it's an American Five or something. Something that do I have a transformer to it? And you. You know, you should use isolation transform. Here's our isolation transform. Plugs into the wall. No big deal. Comes. It's a one-to-one -one transformer. And electrically, there is no connection. None whatsoever. You have a primary and a secondary winding. They're one-to-one, -one, so I put 120 in, I get 120 out. But it's only by mutual inductance that I'm getting that voltage there is no electrical connection of any kind so if you was actually once you hook this up he was actually measuring this to ground you should not have any problems on the hot side either one of these two wires to ground you should never see nothing and that's correct now you got a piece of test gear here now it can be a oscilloscope it can be a signal generator that is plugged in correct in the proper way so that it's ground on its leads you know, like this its ground is actually hooked through its chassis through to that neutral side to the ground did connector which is ground whatever type of test gear it is we're going to assume everything's connected upright and what we end up doing is you know we hook that test lead ground the ground from our test lead to or chassis that provides now it's grounded now let's look at something here let's look at the safety for your test equipment first I have a oscilloscope and it's a fairly modern oscilloscope when you look at the oscilloscope probe you have a ground here this is earth ground okay and then this is, of course, feeds into my input amplifier on my oscilloscope to measure. It goes through its circuitry to measure my wave. If I was hooking an oscilloscope up and I did not have the isolation transformer, I just hooked the radio straight in. Without a polarized plug, number one, I have no way of knowing which way I'm hooking it. And if this is a hot chassis, well, it doesn't matter if it's a hot chassis or not. I'm going to hook this lead here to the negative what should be negative all right so then I can probe with this and I will have my completed circuit whether that's chassis or some radios don't have a hot chassis 
you know, that they have an isolated ground throughout that runs throughout the radio on all, on some all American fives. It doesn't matter. When I hook this up, and if this plug is not polarized, and I've got it flipped, I got a 50-50 chance. But if I got it flipped wrong, when I actually hook this up, I may be actually hooking to this hot. Now, where does this go? It goes in here, goes down this nice little wire, goes to the scope. Inside the scope, where that connection is, may or may not be directly to its chassis. It may actually go to a circuit board. I got one scope, it goes to a chassis. I got another scope, it goes to the circuit board. On that scope, on that circuit board, it's using a trace that's on that board as ground. I could wipe out that trace and any and produce enough heat that any of the circuits near it, you look at any circuit board, there's stuff near all this, I can actually do a lot of damage. I end up I could actually totally damage that circuit board completely. And it's old enough scope it may be very difficult to find parts for. So you want to be careful. Whenever you're working with something like this that doesn't have its own transformer power supply use isolation it protects your equipment but there's a big butt always in this <coughs> you got this guy hooked up say it's a scope or whatever you got it grounded now you gotta be careful because the minute I hook that ground up for me as a human being that chassis is not isolated anymore. Now I'm going to prove that point to you on this drawing. The minute I hook that up, I have grounded one side of this isolation transformer to earth. Now what am I going to be doing? Well, I may be testing voltages. I may be using the scope and testing in there. And as long as I'm keeping one hand behind my back, keeping away from everything, I'm probably going to be perfectly safe. Like you should always do, even if it's a transformer set and you're checking some of these high voltages. But what if, just for the sake of argument, that this radio has some controls, and what if one of those controls, maybe the center, the pot center or something, is hot? It's picking up some B plus on it. There are radios that do. Some of the controls can actually, the shafts can be friggin' hot. Okay? Now, if I don't have this ground hooked up, this is truly isolated. And I touch that shaft, I'm fine. But if I have this piece of test equipment hooked up, you know, maybe I was doing one thing and now I'm going to do something, or maybe I'm still doing that and I need to turn that control. I don't put a knob on it, I'm just going to grab a hold of the shaft. <coughs> now as long as I'm wearing rubber soled shoes, I'm on a wood floor that's dry, I'm not next to anything, the chassis, nothing else, maybe some other test equipment leads that could be grounded, you know, I could be sitting there with my arm up against one of those when I'm doing this. As long as none of that's happening, I probably will never notice anything. But if somehow, some way, I'm connecting my body to ground, I have just now made a path from this ground through my body, back around, through this winding, and up my hand. I'm getting the voltage across that winding. And if that takes a path across my heart, it may be bye-bye me. Always know your environment. Always know how you got things connected up. Always know what's being connected, What if it's got grounds to it, what it is grounded, what isn't grounded. Know where you're standing, where you're sitting. Know what's on your bench, what leads is laying there. Everything. So that you do not become a pathway. When I ground this chassis, I'm grounding one side of this isolation transformer. It's no different than this isolation transformer here. Which is feeding my breaker box. Which is again, no different than this plug. 
If none of those grounds existed, everything would be isolated and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But the fact that they do, and I'm making a path from ground, anytime I touch hot, whether it's this hot or this hot, makes no difference. It's the same thing. I'm still going to get shocked. So always know everything is going on around you. Always use an isolation transformer when you're working with something that does not have a transformer. It protects you, it protects your equipment. And when you're working with anything, even if it does have a transformer that has shafts, make sure you use, put the knobs back on, just to be on the safe side. Most of the knobs are baked lighter plastic, something like that. It just added security. So, besides that, some controls, maybe you got a, a band switch. It's kind of hard to turn. I've had band switches that had really strong springs in them, and they were real difficult to turn. By putting that knob on there, it made it a lot easier. So, just some food for thought is all I wanted to do this on. And I'll let you know that, you know, be safe. So, anyway kind of a short video on this but uh, I, I if you have any questions leave them in the comments but I hope you kind of understood what I went through here and and the reasons for it so thanks for watching and uh, I want to say a big thanks to all my new subscribers and on uh, your guys' comments uh, I haven't had a chance to really get back to too many of them but I really appreciate I do enjoy what uh, reading them and and stuff so they make my day and uh, I keep saying I got the best viewers on YouTube I, I swear so thanks again guys and I'll see you in the next video